Well, Uganda is reacting angrily to a United Nations report accusing it and Rwanda of supporting the M23 rebel group in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The UN Security Council's group of experts said in a confidential report that Rwanda and Uganda continue to support the M23 rebels in their six-month fight against Congolese troops in North Kivu province. Both nations have repeatedly denied the charges and Uganda's Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs again strongly rejected the report. First of all, uh, I like to categorically deny uh, and make it very clear that, in my view, this report, uh, as other reports uh, in the past alleging that Uganda, during its tenure as chair of the International Conference of the Region, has been uh, supporting M23, I like to make it very, very clear in no uncertain terms that, in my view, this is rubbish. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. This report has got, bears no evidence whatsoever. I think efforts should be made to give credit to the government of Uganda for the effort it has made to bring peace in Eastern DRC. Now the situation is especially, or rather appeared to be especially sticky for Rwanda because the nation is eyeing a seat at the UN Security Council. Uh, for more perspective on the Rwanda M23 situation, we're joined by VOS Margaret Bashir at the United Nations. Hello, Margaret. Hi, Vincent. I have some breaking news for you from exactly. the UN this morning. Exactly. It looks like uh, Rwanda, despite of all this report, has gotten... An they got their seat. Exactly. Go ahead. Give us a sense of what happened, how many nations voted, how many abstained. Well, we had the vote in the UN General Assembly just uh, moments ago. The result was announced. Rwanda received 148 votes in favor of their candidacy, but keep in mind they weren't running against anyone because the African group had decided among themselves who they were putting forward as their candidate, and they chose Rwanda several months ago. So uh, this was already decided before this controversy erupted over the UN Expert of Panels report, uh, ex Expert Group report, excuse me. So they received 148 votes today. That means about 44 countries did not vote for them, but they got the requisite two-thirds majority of the UN General Assembly to support their candidacy, which, um, in light of these things, is, is a very interesting development. Yeah. Now, this obviously does not make DRC officials very excited. We know that earlier they were uh, saying that uh, they prefer that Rwanda does not join the UN Security Council. Well, of course, DRC is very upset about this whole situation, about this report. And uh, just before the vote this morning, the representative of the, at the meeting of the DRC, Charlotte Malenga, she spoke and she said, said she was speaking on a point, point of order. And she said that Rwanda shouldn't be on the Security Council because they are harboring uh, criminals who are responsible for operations in the Eastern DRC. And she noted that the Security Council is the primary organ uh, charged with maintaining international peace and security. So I think the inference there is if you're uh, disturbing or accused of disturbing international p peace and security in your neighborhood, you, you shouldn't be on the body that is charged with preserving it. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said that many uh, people are wanted for crimes uh, in the DRC, and I think she was referring to Bosco Nataganda, perhaps. Yes. Now, Margaret, what have you heard from the Rwandan officials? From uh, Rwanda, well, of course, they're denying these allegations of, about the UN report. They're saying the group of experts is following a political agenda and that uh, the allegations are baseless. Uh, now, typically, really, uh, what happens uh, with this kind of reports at the UN uh, Security Council? Well, it varies depending on the report and the country. Uh, you know, this report may not be made public, certainly not immediately. It's, it's happened before this way. Some countries on the council may object to making the report public. So it's not clear just yet uh, what will happen, what the next steps will be. But I, I, you know, DRC is calling for sanctions on uh, Rwanda or on the individuals named in the report. It's going to be very hard to get support for sanctions on a country that is sitting on the council. I can't think of another country that has sat on the council while under sanctions. I can think of some countries that have been on the agenda of the Security Council, for instance, Bosnia, Lebanon, but they weren't under sanctions.
Now, uh, which makes it a little tricky, if indeed this report uh, comes out later on officially, uh, what does Rwanda and those who feel aggrieved uh, do, I mean, you, uh, rather Congo DRC, do in this situation where Rwanda is part of the UN Security Council, although it doesn't vote? I mean, it's not permanent, rather. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. The non-permanent members vote. They don't have a veto. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what DRC's next steps will be. I think they're going to have to rethink whatever their strategy might be for dealing with this in an international forum, because this will, I think, make it more difficult for them. But I'll tell you, Rwanda has hired a law firm in Washington, D.C., so I'm not sure what they're thinking about as their next steps, but they, they've been speaking to lawyers. Well, thank you very much, Margaret, for your report. Uh, Margaret Bashir reporting live from the United Nations.